So let's start off with the most obvious risk, and that is smart contract risk. And I'll spend some time on smart contract risk, and I've divided it into a number of different sub-modules. So the first is the type of exploit. So what are we talking here? We're talking about a, a hack. And I'm going to be careful in the way that I actually use the hack because uh, sometimes hacks are very nefarious where people actually go in and, and steal a coin. Uh, there's another type of hack that's more like an arbitrage. You see an opportunity uh, to take advantage of something and, and you do. So that's not in the same category, in my opinion, as the sort of um, hack that comes from an adversary that uh, actually wants to steal something. So the sort of hacks that we are familiar with, and I'll talk about these to some degree, but not a lot, um, are the sa hacks of these um, centralized exchanges. Uh, so there's been a long list of them, and people make the mistake of thinking, oh, well, these are blockchain uh, hacks. And it really has nothing to do with blockchain and nothing to do with smart contracts. These are just centralized exchanges. They're like brokers. And the security practices are, are poor. And somebody comes in and exploits them. And I'll go through some details, but that's not really what we're talking about uh, here. So we're talking in the DeFi space um, in terms of a smart uh, contract and the risks um, that are associated with having a contract that is not very well thought out or not very uh, secure. So this is a new type of risk. Okay, so just to be clear, and I said already that DeFi solves some problems or risk uh, situations that we have in centralized finance, like counterparty risk. But you introduce a new class of risks. And the key component uh, in DeFi is a smart contract. So if there are issues with that smart contract, then that opens the door uh, to an exploit. So let's think about this risk. It's, I think, uh, fascinating in that it's just so different. So, so think about a hacker um, wanting to do some damage to, let's say, a centralized, uh, let's say, a commercial bank. Well, the first thing that they need to do is to get into the bank systems. And that might not be easy to do. But let's say they get in. Then the second thing they need to do is to look at all the code, which could be hundreds of thousands of lines of code, and to figure out where to attack. And then they attack. Okay, so that is in the usual um, kind of centralized finance world. And it's not just centralized finance, it's, it's basically the business world as we know it. Now contrast that with, with decentralized finance. So with decentralized finance, the code is public. You don't need to hack in to see the code. It's for anybody to look at and download. Okay, so, so it's very interesting, as I said, that uh, this is a new attack vector where the code is available to anyone. Okay, so that means you need to be like really, really careful. So for example, in, in centralized finance, if you've got really good security and nobody can get in to your website, even if your code has got some flaws, given that nobody can get in, you're pretty well protected. So in decentralized finance, it is wide open for anybody 
to take a look. And if there's any flaw in that code, it's going to be exploited. Okay, so this is definitely um, what I call a new attack uh, vector. And it's something that is uh, basically unknown uh, in traditional uh, finance, and it points to the importance of having very high quality uh, smart contracts. These smart contracts are not hundreds of thousands of lines. They are actually pretty short uh, and, and concise, and you need to get it right. And part of what we'll do in this course is uh, highlight a number of situations where you don't uh, get it right. So uh, what do you do to mitigate that risk? And it's interesting in the DeFi ecosystem that there are a number of companies that have been uh, founded that are doing quite well. And, and their, their single job is to do an audit of the smart contract uh, code. Okay, so this is standard uh, practice now where you develop your smart contract. And before, for example, people transfer liquidity uh, to that contract, you want to make sure that there are no uh, mistakes. So uh, we've got a history of smart contract um, compromises. And again, I'll go through uh, some of them like DeForce uh, we'll talk about. So it's the history of these. And to reduce the chance that there's an exploit, companies will employ uh, a third party auditor to go through and to basically stress test the smart contract. Indeed, the stakes might be very high. So this could be a contract that effectively billions of dollars go to. It's got to be really secure. So it's sometimes the case that you employ not one auditor, but two auditors, just to make sure that everything is exactly right. So again, this is different from centralized finance uh, because the code is available for anybody uh, to see. So uh, we'll talk also about uh, the sources of risk in terms of uh, an exploit of a smart contract. So one obvious source of risk is like a logic error. In, in the code. Okay, so that is, uh, that is one category. There's many categories, but there could be um, an economic exploit also that will go through a considerable detail um, that might involve an oracle that could be uh, manipulated. So, but, but the, the logic error is kind of the easiest uh, to deal with because that's within the actual code. So it's something that uh, you definitely want to make sure there's nothing um, that uh, is, is like that in the contract. So uh, let me uh, give you an example of a logic error. So you might have, um, you might have a contract that Basically, um, you, you hold tokens in that contract, and it basically serves as uh, an escrow. And let's say we set this contract up uh, so that it is a lottery. And we've talked about lotteries uh, before, that you can have a fair lottery. So people put their token into the contract, and there's going to be one winner uh, that's drawn. So let's say that happens, uh, and the contract is keeping track of how many tokens and fractions of tokens that it actually has. Um, and then let's say there's some rounding somewhere. Okay, so if that happens, then um, this could be devastating uh, for the contract because it might be that you round up a little bit. So let's say the contract has got 
the equivalent of 999,999.99 um, uh, of, of the token. And let's say the payout is rounded up to 1 million for the lottery winner. So within the contract, it goes to transfer the 1 million to the winner. But there's insufficient funds because we're short by one cent. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but given that this is algorithmic, and it might not be one cent, it might be a fraction of a cent, that that means that every time the contract tries to transfer the one million, the transfer fails. Okay, so again, uh, this is a devastating logic error because it means that that $1 million minus one cent is going to be locked in that contract forever. Okay, so, so things that don't really seem like a big deal could become devastating. And, and rounding is just an example, it's actually a common example of something that you definitely want uh, to uh, avoid. And the worst possible scenario is where all of the funds are, we call it bricked uh, in the smart contract. They're there, but there's no way to get them out. It's locked. Okay, so that, that's uh, an example of uh, a logic error. Uh, econ economic exploits are, are more subtle. Um, and again, often it's involving something outside of the, uh, of the smart contract that could be uh, manipulated. So there's no logic error uh, in the code, but um, it could be that the contract is exchanging uh, tokens and that it looks for a price through an oracle. And uh, so in looking for that uh, price, it's possible to, um, to go to the oracle and potentially manipulate the oracle and cause an opportunity for um, an exploit. And this is actually a fairly common uh, thing to do. Uh, to take advantage of illiquid uh, decentralized exchange uh, mechanisms and to manipulate the oracle price to get uh, a better deal. This, again, is something that you might call it a hack, you might call it something else, that you see an opportunity. Uh, there's, uh, there's nothing illegal that goes on here. Uh, this is basically, everything is transparent. So anybody could actually do this. Okay, so um, this is just uh, an economic uh, exploit. So to be a little more specific here, um, the way that this would happen uh, is you've got this Oracle feed from, uh, from another uh, exchange, let's say it's a, a just a single uh, feed, and that exchange is not that liquid. And we've talked about this situation as to what happens when you've got illiquidity in, in the context of our constant function automated mar market makers. So given that there's not much uh, liquidity, um, on the Oracle exchange, you sell heavily. And when you do that, uh, it reduces the price of the target uh, token. And if it's illiquid, it could very substantially reduce the price. And then you go to the more liquid uh, contract that is using that uh, illiquid contract as the price, the Oracle price. And then you do the reverse, you, you buy and you're buying at a really cheap uh, price. Okay, so you manipulate one feed 
to reduce the price and then you buy and you're buying at a cheaper price and then eventually that will go up uh, in value. Um, so, so this is just an example and we'll go through other examples like this, but this is an example of an economic uh, exploit. So again, there's a long list of exploits like this, but some of them um, are known as uh, flash uh, attacks. So uh, we actually did a number of examples of using flash loans uh, in the previous course. So we talked about a flash loan to refinance uh, a loan. Uh, we also talked about a flash loan to take advantage of an arbitrage uh, uh, opportunity. So, um, so, so basically, the situation here is, and I tried to make this clear in the previous course, that anybody can take a flash loan. Okay, so this is not restricted to the high net worth uh, individuals. Okay, so these attacks uh, can happen uh, very quickly with very considerable size. So we'll go through a few of them uh, in this course, and one of them we'll go through in great detail where you can see all of the transfers. So, so I guess what I'm saying here is that in traditional finance, you might think of there being different markets for the same commodity, for instance. So oil is an example where there's markets for oil, even within the US, uh, at different locations. And you might think of a strategy where at one location, maybe you can buy the oil cheap, and then you could sell at another location where it's more expensive. And even after the cost of transportation. But it's way more co complicated. First, I've already mentioned, you have to actually transport uh, the commodity to the other exchange. And second is the time lag in actually doing that. So by the time you transport, maybe that uh, higher price has decreased and what seemed to be an arbitrage uh, really isn't. Okay, so in, in centralized finance, there's, there's a lot of risk in actually uh, doing this. Whereas in decentralized finance, this happens near instantly at very low cost. And anybody is, is welcome uh, in these protocols to take out a flash loan to make this not a small exploit, but a large uh, exploit. Okay, so flash loans play uh, a very important role here. So again, uh, it's, it's very, very important to get this right. So it's a bad idea in a smart contract to have an oracle that goes out to a single, illiquid, decentralized exchange. You're just asking for problems if that's the case. So often that's mitigated by using a number, not just one, but a number of liquid uh, exchanges. But this is, again, um, really uh, important for this particular te technology. There have been many of these flash uh, attacks or exploits. And, and again, I just want to be careful here um, because I'm not using the word hack, though some people will use uh, the word hack, especially uh, in uh, the media. So um, uh, BZX is, uh, is an example of one uh, that was based on a flash uh, attack. And basically the attacker uh, took a flash loan, diverted funds to, to purchase a levered uh, short position, and then manipulated the price of the Oracle that the short position was based uh, upon. And they closed the short with the profit, $300,000. It's, it's a, a small amount in the big picture of things, but it's, it's a good exploit uh, to show you um, what the vulnerability is. So this is a good example of an economic uh, exploit. And we've got plenty of examples uh, like that. 
So this is in a little more detail uh, what this attack actually looked like, and let me actually go through it. So the first thing is a flash loan on DYDX, which we just talked about, uh, for 10,000 um, Ether. Okay, so this is not a small uh, flash loan. If you think about the price of Ether uh, at, at $2,000. Uh, and then uh, 5,500 Ether sent to Compound uh, to collateralize a loan of 112 um, wrapped Bitcoin, which we talked about at the end of the uh, third course. And then 1,300 ETH sent to uh, Fulcrum's um, P token and a five times leverage short position is opened against uh, the ETH um, Bitcoin uh, ratio. And then we get uh, 5,637 ETH borrowed and swapped to 51 wrap Bitcoin through Kyber, which we also talked about, uh, Uniswap Reserve. And that is exactly where the slippage occurred. So that was basically manipulating the, uh, the price there. And then the attacker swapped the 112 wrap Bitcoin uh, borrowed from Compound to 6,871 ETH on Uniswap. And there you see the profit. And the flash loan is paid back in the end. It's all in one transaction. You can actually go through this, see the math, and the profit um, was 1,193 uh, ETH. So again, this is... Uh, this is like a key thing, is that manipulation of the illiquid um, price that was based on like uh, the Oracle and, uh, and this, uh, you know, generated uh, a profit for uh, the attacker. So I've also got um, a screenshot from uh, Etherscan. So Etherscan is a website where you can see everything that's ever happened on the Ethereum blockchain. So everything is there. So every block, every transaction is there. And I've highlighted the transaction uh, hash of the, uh, this particular uh, exploit. And you can see the block number. You can see the address where it came from. And that address uh, is an Ethereum address with the zero X on it, and uh, notice that it's labeled the BZX exploiter number one. So that is basically the address of the exploiter that went through, did all of this, uh, and, and generated a, a $300,000 uh, profit. Some of the profits, uh, again, are gonna be much uh, greater. And Etherscan also, uh, shows you the basics of the transaction. So it's a little less detailed here uh, from what I just showed you, but you can see um, the borrow uh, of Ether on, on the flash uh, loan from DYDX. And remember, when we talked about DYDX, that those flash loans come without a fee. There's no fee associated with that to take a loan of that size and no collateral. And notice in this transaction, that you borrow, the first thing you do is borrow. And then we're supplying Ether to Compound. And that collateral is used to borrow 112 wrapped uh, Bitcoin. Then there's a swap on Kyber. And then the last line, we repay the flash loan. So again, if anything happened that uh, failed in the intermediate steps, then we return to the original uh, state where there's actually no uh, flash loan. Okay, so this is an important property of this transaction with multiple steps that it is atomic. And that's the reason that the flash loan is basically got no counterparty risk, even though uh, the person taking it out has got no collateral uh, whatsoever. So this is a fairly simple uh, exploit. Uh, I can represent the exploit in, in like five lines. We're going to look at later on uh, much more complex uh, exploits, but they had the same flavor. 
where you're borrowing something and then you use that borrowed fund uh, as collateral and you mint something else and then you use it and then you pay everything back uh, on the final step. So this is the basic idea of an economic exploit, very important uh, risk in the DeFi space.